ऑल इंडिया रेडियो प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम वर्षा विलियम्स एंड विथ मी इज सरबजीत कौर द हेडलाइंस प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी वेलकम्स फॉरन इन्वेस्टमेंट इन रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी सेक्टर डिस्क्राइब्स इंडिया एज द मोस्ट अट्रैक्टिव मार्केट फॉर क्लीन एनर्जी कोविड नाइन्टीन फेटेलिटी रेट डिक्लाइंस टू टू पॉइंट सेवन टू परसेंट इन द कंट्री आई आर डी ए आई गिव्स इट्स नॉट टू इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज टू लॉन्च कोरोना कवरेज हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसीज डब्ल्यू एच ओ सेट्स अप इंडिपेंडेंट पैनल टू रिव्यू इथ हैंडलिंग ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन पैंडेमिक इंडिया फॉरन एक्सचेंज रिजर्व टच इज ऑल टाइम हाई ऑफ फाइव हंड्रेड and india becomes second largest foreign investor in the uk prime minister narendra modi has welcomed foreign investment in the renewable energy sector and said that india is seen as a model for clean energy calling solar energy sure pure and secure mr modi said india is one of the most attractive markets for clean energy bharat ko clean energy ka सबसे एट्रैक्टिव मार्केट माना जा रहा है आज जब रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी की तरफ ट्रांजेक्शन को लेकर दुनिया में चर्चा होती है तो इसमें भारत को मॉडल के रूप में देखा जाता है दुनिया की समग्र मानवता की भारत से इसी आशा इसी अपेक्षा को देखते हुए हम पूरे विश्व को जोड़ने में जुटे हुए हैं वन वर्ल्ड वन सन वन ग्रीड के पीछे की यही भावना है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर वॉज इन नॉक यूरेटिंग एशिया बिगेस्ट सोलर प्रोजेक्ट इन रीवा मध्य प्रदेश थ्रू वीडियो लिंक ये सेवन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी मेगावाट प्लांट इन रीवा इज द फर्स्ट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी प्रोजेक्ट टू प्रोवाइड एनर्जी आउटसाइड द स्टेट टू डेली मेट्रो मिस्टर मोदी सेट ही एक्सपेक्ट मध्य प्रदेश टू बिकम अ हब ऑफ क्लीन एनर्जी इन इंडिया विद द एडिशन ऑफ दिस प्रोजेक्ट ही सेट सोलर एनर्जी इज गोइंग टू बी अ मेजर मीडियम ऑफ एनर्जी नीड्स नॉट ओनली टू डे बट इन द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी ही सेड दैट रीवाज अल्ट्रा मेगा प्रोजेक्ट विल रिड्यूस कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इमिशंस एवरी ईयर बाय अबाउट वन पॉइंट फाइव मिलियन टन्स विच वुड हैव अदरवाइज बीन अ बाय प्रोडक्ट ऑफ कन्वेंशनल एनर्जी सोर्सेज He said solar energy will play a big role in atmanirbharta or self-reliance and remains a core focus of the government. Atmanirbhar Bharat ke liye bijli ki atmanirbharta bahut aavashyak hai. Isme saur urja ek bahut badi bhumika nibhane wali hai aur hamare prayas Bharat ki isi taakat ko vistar dene ke hain. On reducing reliance on imports Mr Modi said the government has realized the need for commissioning many such other projects which would manufacture PV cells batteries and storage equipment The Ministry of New and Renewable Energy has issued a fresh advisory against fraudulent websites claiming registration under PM Kusum scheme The scheme provides for installation of solar pumps solarization of existing grid connected agricultural pumps and installation of grid connected renewable power plants the ministry said it has recently been noticed that two new websites have cropped up illegally claiming registration portal for pm kusum scheme the web addresses of these fraud websites are www.kusum-yojana.co.in and www.onlinekusumyojana.co.in it said The government is taking action against the miscreants behind these websites. The ministry said details of these of such agencies are available on MNRE's website www.mnre.gov.in. India's COVID-19 fatality rate has declined to 2.72%. This is lower than the fatality rates observed in many other countries in the world. Union Health Ministry said the focus of COVID-19 management in the country has been to keep the fatalities low. It was 2.82% a month ago. Health Ministry also noted that 30 states and union territories have a fatality rate lower than the national average. Manipur, Nagaland, Dadra and Nagar Haveli, Andaman and Diu, Mizoram, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Sikkim have zero fatality rate. 
The ministry said, with the support and guidance of the central government, the states and union territories have taken many steps like mapping of communities to focus on high-risk groups like the elderly, aged and population with comorbidities and providing special care to them. Union government has said that the recovery rate of COVID-19 patients has reached 62.42%. During the last 24 hours, a total of over 19,000 COVID-19 patients cured, taking the cumulative figure of recovered cases to more than 4,95,000. There are over 2,76,000 active cases and all are under medical supervision. Union Health Ministry said the improvement in recovery rate is the result of aggressive testing that ensures early detection of patients. During the last 24 hours, over 2,83,000 samples were tested. The cumulative number of samples tested is over 1 crore 10 lakh. The testing lab network in the country is further strengthened with 835 labs in the government sector and 334 private labs. Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India, IRDAI, has allowed 29 general and health insurers to launch short-term corona coverage health insurance policies. The policy will cover medical expenses occurred due to coronavirus disease. The insurance regulator said that it has designed a standard COVID-specific product addressing basic health insurance needs of insuring public with common policy wordings across the industry. The sum insured amount of the policy ranges between 50,000 rupees to 5 lakh rupees. This policy can be availed by persons between the age of 18 to 65 years. People can avail the Corona coverage policy for self, spouse, parents, parents-in-law and dependent children up to 25 years of age. The IRDAI has said that the policy will also provide for any comorbid condition triggered due to COVID-19 during the period of hospitalization. The authority had issued clearance to 30 general and health insurance companies to market this corona coverage policy. Following the IRDAI order, several insurers have already announced the launch of the corona coverage policies for three and a half months six and a half months and nine and a half months. Home care expenses benefit up to a period of 14 days will also be covered in the policy for those seeking treatment within the comfort of their own homes on the advice of a medical practitioner. The Uttar Pradesh government will launch a massive sanitization drive across the state today. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath will himself monitor the drive aimed at containing COVID-19 in the state. UP is under a series of restrictions for a period of 55 hours since last night. The restrictions, which started at 10 p.m. last night, will continue till 5 a.m. on Monday. More from our correspondent. A little amendment in the restrictions was issued by Chief Secretary of State R. Ketiwari yesterday evening. Now all industrial activities will continue in the state as usual, but adherence to the social distancing guidelines will be a must. Also, it will be compulsory to establish COVID desks in all industrial units. Religious places will also remain open today and tomorrow. Meanwhile, special nodal officers have been appointed in all 75 districts for the massive sanitization campaign in rural and urban areas areas across the state. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath will himself monitor this drive and officials have been asked to conduct photography of the sanitization work. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. In Bihar, a fresh complete lockdown has been imposed in five districts of Nalanda, Vaishali, Begusarai, Jamoi and Gopalganj beginning today due to an alarming spike in COVID-19 cases. With this, lockdown is imposed in 15 districts of the state. Six days lockdown has been imposed in three districts of Nalanda, Vaishali and Begusarai. In Jamoi district, there will be five days lockdown. Lockdown has been imposed in four blocks of Gopalganj till July the 18th. Meanwhile, with 352 new COVID-19 cases taking the tally to 14,330, in all 10,251 persons have recovered so far. In Madhya Pradesh, there has been a significant decline in the corona death rate in the state in the last one week. During this period, there were 22 deaths among 2,053 positive cases, which is just 1.1%. A report. 
16,657 people have been infected with corona in the state up to now, but 12,481 corona patients have gone home after recovery so far in the Madhya Pradesh. Meanwhile, survey work of 66% population has been completed under Kill Corona campaign, launched to eliminate corona in the state. During the survey, 55,799 samples have been taken, out of which 655 have been reported positive. The state's corona positive rate is 1.17%. A large number of samples are being taken under the Kill Corona campaign. As per the official information, the Sarthak Light app is also very useful in controlling Corona. Through this app, 65,000 people have got themselves registered in the state so far, and five of them have been identified as positive and are being given treatment. Sanjeev Sharma, AIR News, Bhopal. The number of Corona cases in Gujarat has crossed 40,000 mark. 875 new cases were detected in last 24 hours. 14 patients have lost their lives, taking the total death toll due to COVID-19 in the state up to 2024. More details from our correspondent. With the detection of 875 new cases in Gujarat, the total cases reported till now have gone up to 40,155. The maximum 202 cases reported from Surat City, while Ahmedabad City recorded 153 new cases. 441 patients have been discharged after recovery during the last 24 hours. With these, total patients recovered from COVID-19 have gone up to 28,183. More than 4,49,000 tests have been carried out in the state till date. Meanwhile, the state labor department has fined a construction company in Ahmedabad for not following safety measures for workers on construction site. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. In Maharashtra, many district administrations and local municipal corporations are either imposing lockdowns or extending the duration in their jurisdiction to contain the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. Steady rise is seen in number of COVID-19 patients in prominent cities like Pune, Thane, Kalyan and Mira Bhayandar. More details from our correspondent. Thane Municipal Corporation has decided to extend the previously imposed lockdown by one week till July 19 due to steep rise in COVID-19 patients. Kalyan Dombivali Municipal Corporation has extended lockdown till July 19. Neighboring Mira Bhayandar Municipal Corporation has also extended the lockdown till July 19. Three-day lockdown has been in place in Vardha since yesterday. Nanded District Administration has also announced lockdown from tomorrow which will continue till July 20. Shailish Patil, AIR News, Mumbai. Tamil Nadu government is taking measures to promote convalescent plasma therapy on a large scale along with other clinical methods for COVID-19 treatment. It is in the process of establishing a blood plasma bank at the government Rajiv Gandhi General Hospital in Chennai. Meanwhile, the state government has decided to permit IT firms in Chennai to function with 50% of the staff from Monday. A detailed report from our correspondent. The Tamil Nadu government has decided to further relax the conditions for the IT firms in the state capital from Monday. Currently, just 10% of the IT staff are permitted to physically attend their offices. They are being encouraged by the government and the companies to work from home due to the pandemic. However, Chennai is witnessing a significant dip in the everyday record of new cases. Buoyed by the improvement, the government has said in a statement that the IT firms can now allow half its total strength at a time in their office premises. However, it will be on condition that 90% of them should be brought in company-arranged vehicles by following the safety protocols. It is considered to be a portent to more such relaxations if the situation continues to show improvement in the state capital. Jay Singh, AR News, Chennai. The World Health Organization, WHO, has set up an independent panel to review its handling of the COVID-19 pandemic and the response by governments. The announcement follows strong criticism by U.S. President Donald Trump, who accused the WHO of being China-centric. Former New Zealand Prime Minister Helen Clark and former Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf have agreed to head the panel. The co-chairs will select the other members. The panel will then provide an interim report to an annual meeting of health ministers in November and present a substantive report next May. 
WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus said the magnitude of this pandemic has virtually touched everyone and deserved a commensurate evaluation. More than 1.2 crore people have been infected by the novel coronavirus globally and over 5.48 lakh have died. The U.S. has formally informed the WHO that it is withdrawing from the UN agency in a year's time. In our series, Experts Speak on All India Radio, we bring you views of leading medical experts on COVID-19. Talking to AIR News, Director at Ames in Delhi, Dr. Randeep Guleria, advised people to follow social distancing and hand hygiene norms to check the spread of COVID-19 infection. Regular hand washing should be done. So those who in an area where there is coronavirus infection should wash their hands regularly. You should avoid going to crowded places because if someone in the crowd is coughing and has the infection, he can spread to others in the crowded places. And if any member in your family has fever, cough, cold, he should stay at home and avoid going out so that he doesn't spread the infection to other people in the community. Dr. Akesh Garg of Ames in Delhi said the spread of COVID-19 infection takes place through a person having a travel history as well as from those who have come in contact with the infected person. सबसे ज्यादा मायने वाली चीज ये रखती है कि हम कोविड-19 की सस्पेशन उस पर ज्यादा डिपेंड करेंगे अगर उसकी कुछ ऐसी जगह से ट्रैवल की हिस्ट्री है जहां पर पॉजिटिव केसेस थे एंडेमिक एरिया था या फिर उनका ऐसे कांटेक्ट हुआ किसी पेशेंट से जो ऑलरेडी पॉजिटिव था या सस्पेक्ट था या फिर ऐसे पेशेंट की जो देखभाल कर रहा है जो कि पॉजिटिव है या सस्पेक्ट है तो अगर ये हिस्ट्री पॉजिटिव है और साथ में सिम्टम्स भी हैं तो उसमें चांसेस कोविड-19 के होने के रहते हैं Participating in AIR's live phone-in program on COVID-19, Dr. Madhur Yadav, Professor of Medicine at Lady Harding Medical College, advised people to follow proper respiratory etiquettes when going outside for work. We need to keep the same way that we have kept in lockdown. We will not get out of the house. We will not get out of the mask. And the respiratory etiquette, which is मास्क लगाना अगर ठीक है तो हम कोहनी होती है मोड़ के ठीक है और लगातार हाथ धोते रहे ये सारी वो है हम लोग पहले भी कर रहे थे अब थोड़ा ज्यादा करना है और सबसे बड़ी बात ये है कि जब तक जरूरत ना हो घर से बाहर ना निकले यू आर लिस्निंग टू द मॉर्निंग न्यूज ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो अ रिमाइंडर ऑफ द हेडलाइंस बिफोर वी मूव ऑन Prime Minister Narendra Modi welcomes foreign investments in renewable energy sector describes India as the most attractive market for clean energy COVID-19 fertility rate declines to 2.72% in the country IRDAI gives its nod to insurance companies to launch corona coverage health insurance policies WHO sets up independent panel to review its handling of COVID-19 pandemic. India's foreign exchange reserves touches all-time high of 513.25 billion dollars and India becomes second largest foreign investor in UK. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. India's foreign exchange reserves have surged by a massive 6.47 billion dollars to reach a fresh all-time high of 513.25 billion dollars in the week ended 3rd July 2020. Foreign currency assets, a major part of the overall reserves, rose by 5.66 billion dollars to 473.26 billion dollars in the previous week. The reserves had increased. by 1.27 billion dollars to end at 506.84 billion dollars the reserves had crossed to the half a trillion dollar mark for the first time in the first week of june when it had jumped by 8.22 billion dollars to reach 501.70 billion dollar mark the state owned union bank of india has announced reduction in its marginal cost of funds based lending rate nclr by 20 basis points across tenors The new rates will be applicable from today. The revised one-year MCLR stands at 7.40% as against 7.60% earlier. The three-month and six-month MCLRs have been cut to 7.10% and 7.25% respectively. This is the 13th consecutive rate cut by the lender since July last year. 
another public sector lender, Bank of Baroda, has reduced its MCLR by five basis points across tenors from the 12th of July. The country's largest lender, State Bank of India, has also reduced its MCLR by five to ten basis points for shorter tenors. The Niti Aayog has organized a virtual workshop with 47 central ministries departments in furtherance of the government's decision to monitor the performance of 29 select global indices to drive reforms and growth in the country. The virtual workshop was chaired by Cabinet Secretary Rajiv Gauba. The methodology of stakeholder consultation, engagement with publishing and survey data agencies, framework for state rankings, platform for information sharing and monitoring mechanism were discussed at length in the workshop. The 29 global indices published by 19 international agencies have been assigned to 18 nodal ministries and departments of the Government of India. Government has said that fish cryobanks will be set up in different parts of the country. This will facilitate all-time availability of fish sperms of desired species to fish farmers. Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Daring Minister Giriraj Singh announced this on the occasion of National Fish Farmers Day yesterday. He said this will be the first time in the world when fish cryobank will be established. Mr. Singh said this will bring a revolutionary change in the fisheries sector in the country for enhancing fish production and productivity. Union Ministry Agriculture is taking several measures to facilitate the farmers and farming activities at field level during COVID-19 pandemic. The ministry said there has been satisfactory progress of sowing area coverage under Kharif crops. It said rice has been sown in about 120.77 lakh hectare area as compared to 95.73 lakh hectare during the corresponding period of last year. Besides, about 64.25 lakh hectare area has been brought under sowing of pulses as compared to 24.49 lakh hectare during the corresponding period of last year. Union Minister for Chemicals and Fertilizers D.V. Sadananda Gowda has informed that the Atma Nirbhar Bharat program announced by the Prime Minister has provided succor to more than 35 lakh MSMEs through extension of credit. Speaking to AIR News, the minister said the program will revive our economy and also make the country self-reliant. More from our correspondent. Union Minister for Chemicals and Fertilizers D.V. Sadanand Gowda has said that Atmanirbhar program will energize efforts to surpass challenges posed by the corona pandemic. Speaking exclusively to AIR yesterday, he said the Prime Minister has asked every member of parliament to ensure that scheme reaches the beneficiaries. A very big and a realistic Atmanirbhar program was announced for 20 lakh crores, right from an individual in the remote corner of the village. All the industrialists, right from MSME up to the biggest unit across the country, they have been taken care of. Practically, Honorable Prime Minister has advised all the MPs to see that what all announcements made by him during this COVID under Atmanirbhar program that need to be implemented. Sri Sadanand Gowda said that every individual should walk towards making our country self-reliant. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. The 16th meeting of the Working Mechanism for Consultation and Coordination on India-China Border Affairs has agreed to maintain the ongoing communication both at the diplomatic and military level to ensure early resolution of the situation along the line of actual control. The two sides recalled the agreement reached between the two foreign ministers on the 17th of June as well as the agreement between two special representatives during their telephonic conversation on the 5th of July. Both sides agreed to complete disengagement of the troops along the line of actual control LAC and de-escalation from India-China border areas for full restoration of peace and tranquility in the border areas in accordance with bilateral agreements and protocols. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed grief on the loss of lives due to heavy rains as well as landslides in Arunachal Pradesh. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said his thoughts are with the bereaved families. He hoped that the injured will recover quickly. The Prime Minister said all possible assistance is being provided to those affected. In Papumpare district, a house and four people in it were buried alive in a landslide at Tigdo village yesterday morning. National Disaster Management Authority, NDMA, has suggested some measures 
to be followed by the people during flood season so that the losses can be minimized talking to air news ndma member kamal kishore advised the people that before flood they should keep their mobile phones charged for emergency communication and listen to radio watch television and read newspapers for timely weather updates बाढ़ आने से पहले अपने आप को सतर्क रखें रेडियो टीवी समाचार पत्रों में जो ताजा जानकारी दी जा रही है वार्निंग दी जा रही है उस पर हमेशा अपना ध्यान रखें अपना मोबाइल फोन चार्ज रखें जहां तक हो सके एसएमएस का प्रयोग करें ताकि उसकी बैटरी ज्यादा से ज्यादा समय तक चले अपने पालतू जानवरों को बांध कर न रखें और एक इमरजेंसी किट तैयार करके रखें अपने घर के लिए जिसमें प्राथमिक उपचार की चीजें हो डायरिया की दवा हो जो महत्वपूर्ण कागज हैं आपके पास एक वाटरप्रूफ थैले में डाल के संभाल के रखें इंडिया हैज बिकम द सेकंड लार्जेस्ट फॉरेन इन्वेस्टर इन द यूके इंडिया इन्वेस्टेड 120 प्रोजेक्ट्स एंड क्रिएटेड 5,429 न्यू जॉब्स इन द यूके टू बिकम द सेकंड लार्जेस्ट सोर्स ऑफ फॉरेन डायरेक्ट इन्वेस्टमेंट एफडीआई इन 2019 अकॉर्डिंग टू लेटेस्ट यूके गवर्नमेंट डेटा इंडिया मूव्ड अप अ नॉच फ्रॉम इट्स प्रीवियस थर्ड लार्जेस्ट स्पॉट रिप्रेजेंटिंग एन ओवरऑल फोर एफडीआई इंक्रीज The US remains the number one source of FDI for the UK, delivering 462 projects and 20,131 jobs, followed by India, Germany, France and China and Hong Kong. Australia and New Zealand were responsible for 72 projects and the Nordic and Baltic region 134 and increased for both regions. Britain's Prince Charles has lauded India's sustainable way of life amid coronavirus pandemic saying the country's diversity and resilience is a personal inspiration for him and much to teach all addressing India Global Week 2020 through video link he said India's philosophies and values have emphasized a sustainable way of life and a harmonious relationship between humanity and nature Prince Charles also said he spoke to Prime Minister Narendra Modi about the importance of sustainable living. Now a look at the weather updates for today. In Jammu and Kashmir minimum temperature was 28 degrees Celsius in Jammu while maximum will be around 36 degrees. The city is likely to have partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. In Srinagar the temperature will hover between 16 and 32 degrees Celsius. The city is expected to witness partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. In Gilgit, the minimum temperature was recorded at 19 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 32 degrees. Muzaffarabad may see partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Chandigarh will see a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. National capital Delhi may witness generally cloudy sky with light rain. Bengaluru is expected to have temperatures between 20 and 27 degrees Celsius. City will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Ahmedabad will also have a generally cloudy sky with light rain. And now an overview of today's newspapers. Vikas Dubey shot dead is the lead across papers today. Gangster Dubey killed in encounter. Story ends where it began in Kanpur is the Asian Age headline. The Times of India writes caught alive brought dead. New Delhi Beijing agree on complete troops disengagement highlights the statesman the tribune reports pla pulls back boats from pangong so rajnath reviews lac situation as army's pull back states the pioneer on the battle of corona the hindu reports commercial vaccine will take at least 12 months say officials laying fiber optic cables tops pm's job scheme for migrants The Hindustan Times observes the activity emerged as the source of the most work in the Garib Kalyan Rozgar Yojana and finally SCOK OK summons via WhatsApp email The Times of India says in a first the Supreme Court on Friday agreed in principle that serving notices and summons to people through instant messaging services would be legally valid And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Prime Minister Narendra Modi welcomes foreign investments in renewable energy sector describes India as the most attractive market for clean energy COVID-19 fatality rate declines to 2.72% in the country IRDAI gives its nod to insurance companies to launch corona coverage health insurance policies WHO sets up independent panel to review its handling of COVID-19 pandemic India's foreign exchange reserves 
touches all-time high of $513.25 billion and India becomes second largest foreign investor in the UK. With that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.